Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Shake Sales. Today, I got Dale Dupree of the Sales Rebellion. Welcome, Dale. How you doing? Thanks for having me, man. I'm doing good. Awesome. So, I love your tagline: "Sell more, suck less." Um, it seems like these days, really, in order to sell more, you really need to capture and maintain that attention. Uh, we talked offline about everyone struggles with attention; it's always been a constant battle. But today, more than ever, so let's 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 d- dive into that and figure out like some some tips, tactics, strategies to like helpfully keep uh keep folks more your prospects more uh attentive the 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 topic itself is interesting right because if you think back even let's just say 10 years ago to 2013 the idea of of how noisy it was then as compared to how noisy it is now is almost night and day and mm-hmm. and and look i think that the world in general has changed a lot in those 10 years but i also think that ultimately what has happened is that the landscape of sales has evolved and in, into a place that none of us really knew it was going to go, uh, which has been that people have dictated the, the workforce to do nothing but make a ton of calls and send a ton of emails with the only goal in mind of potentially hearing back from somebody. And not mm-hmm. building a relationship, not serving, not helping, not supporting, not giving any type of anything away, to be quite frank, other than pricing and a signature page. And because we have we have managed to ruin an entire generation of sellers and their perspective of the landscape of what sales actually is, we've created an epidemic, an ec- epidemic of noise. And I have right now in my email, and I only know this because I literally just looked at it about 10 minutes ago. 177 emails this week that have the subject line either question for you (laughs) or my name plus their name or my company name plus their car. I mean, it's so predictable at this point that it becomes white noise. And, And that is extremely frustrating for sellers everywhere to recognize and to realize because now it just makes your job that much harder. And and as a matter of fact, I think like one of the biggest issues is, is that so many people are trying to be so different that they're causing more problems. And the and those problems are is that it's not authentic. It's just different to be different is the thought process. But mm. nobody knows how to humanize this identity of attention and, and ultimately what people desire in regards to an exchange with another human being. Bro, I just got off the phone with a guy from a company that I won't say the name of who has literally had 14 different freaking phone calls come through my 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 phone and, and of them, six different people. Right now, I'd heard this guy's name when he said it. I'd heard it before and was like, oh, it's you again. Hey, remember like uh, last time I talked to you, I told you, you guys won't stop calling me and I've I've given you exactly like what's going on and what if you could help what it could be, which is basically nothing. Why do I keep getting these calls? And and the guy like goes into this script straight up as if he knew this was going to happen. Oh, we've called you before. You know, like just straight, it was the same thing I've heard from every single one of them. Again, this idea too of like, as I explained to him, yeah, you have called me this, that, the other. I could just hear him reading the next line, the next thing, the next. And dude, we have literally, I told the guy on the phone, I said, could you just be human with me for a second? Is that too much to ask? Can you listen to what I'm saying and just acknowledge me? Is that okay? I'd like to be seen. I'd like to be heard in this moment if if that's cool with you. Or I'll just hang up like 99% of the other people that you talk to. And, and I think that that's the problem, right? Is that we have we have created a massive gap between the buyer and the seller. There's that's mm-hmm. almost it's almost undefinable what that gap is and how to fix it. In my opinion, love it. Uh, I mean, I don't love it. It's but you did it. that's fantastic. I was looking while you were talking about how many pitches you have in your in my inbox with the subject line "quick question." I've got about a hundred and hundred and five or so in the last 30 days. And that's include, that doesn't include like the follow-ups of those because they're all threaded um, or for the most part are threaded. And I think you're, you're spot on with the problem, which is you're either being the robot or you're trying to stand out from the robot without adding value, recognizing that person. And, and then that's just on email on then like 
it gets super robotic when you call and you call for a script, right? Um, not to mention auto dialers and the stuff where like, it's like a two second pause where the, the caller, the, the, the recipient of the call is like, I know what the heck is happening here, but I guess I'll wait, you know? And then it's like, Oh, Hey, sorry about that. Like, let me tell you about, you know, it's almost like, Today, selling feels like Viagra when email first came out. Viagra emails when, when yeah, you know, uh, email first started coming out. Um, it, it, it wasn't detected by the spam filter that easily. But anyways, so how do you, how do we go about maybe course correcting versus like fixing the problem directly or both? It's a great question. I, I think it's a simple answer ultimately, but the problem is, is that we've simply lost our way so much that when you take a simple answer, a lot of people hear it as the wrong, they should, what I should say is they hear it the wrong way. They don't take it the way that we need to take it. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer it like this, that simply if we give people better experiences, everything changes. Like as an example, if I can, if I could just meet somebody at a moment and where they're at, if I can call somebody and I can say, um, you know, Hey John, this is Dale. Obviously, you've figured out from the random number that's calling you, this is a sales call, but good news, I'm not calling about a timeshare in the middle of nowhere or your car's extended warranty. You want to roll the dice and hear what I got today? And if I can just like literally connect to someone a little bit differently, give them a little bit of something to, to latch onto and to say, this sounds like a homie. This sounds like somebody that I could that I could hang with. And, and the other thought of this is a lot of people say to me all the time, they say, bro, that sounds good and all, but like you're teaching people to do something that like what happens if a 65 year old female or male picks up the phone and you try to do that to them. And I, I try to tell everybody this as well too, just to again, help with the simplicity of this, that when you're just yourself, it doesn't matter the demographic. It doesn't matter the culture, even that the person on the other line will hear mindfulness. They'll hear sincerity. They'll hear something that will help them to prosper, uh, whether or not you sell them something or not, but in the moment, and that's the thing that we don't really recognize. Also, like the people that would, would make those comments, I think, I think are the same people that are causing this problem, which is that they're trying to figure out all these codes and lines and uh, all these things that basically break into someone's attention in the first place when it's really simple. It literally is like one of the most simplest things that we could do. It's, it's, it's understanding some of the core principles of radically educating folks, like causing curiosity or creating emotional context or even disrupting or interrupting what would be the typical pattern of what someone is used to having happen in those moments. It's, it's just getting back to the grassroots of basic human behavior. And we like the, mm -hmm. the concept of doing things like physical drops. So like we got rebels all over the world that will stick a letter in the mail and they'll have fun with the envelope, change the colors of it, put some funny stamps like Oscar the Grouch, you know, on it, just good, good things that, that create again familiar moments and a more humanistic approach and inside is a crumpled up piece of paper that the, the the recipient opens and thinks like what is this and and it's that curiosity it's that emotional context and they read a line that you know says hey basically 90 percent of the sales and marketing you get is trash so i pre-crumpled this to make it easier for you to throw away because i value your time and i know how annoying sales can be and because if we just meet people in their moment call out the obvious and seek to serve it it changes everything and that that comes in a lot of different formats ultimately but it's simple the thought process is really simple and the and the issue again is is that we continue to convolute it we say well i, I kind of like that ideal dale but i'm going to do it this way and and look like there's nothing wrong with being authentic and doing your thing but at the same time like what is your motive why do you need to do it that way? Is it because it's uncomfortable and risky? Well, it's probably something that you should do in that case. Is it because the the that people, t you know, in your mind, you're like, ah, I don't know this this 60 year old CEO. I'm not sure what they're gonna re how they're gonna react to this. Well, you don't know until you try, and and you mm -hmm. have nothing to lose because n none of it is yours in the first place. So I, I feel like mm -hmm. we're we're kind of we've also kind of babied a generation into this idea that like I'll oh, just send a bunch of emails and everything will be okay and you'll sell stuff and like instead of giving them like the vision of ultimate freedom, true happiness and fulfillment that like sales can change your life and in turn you can change other people's as well too. We've just dumbed the whole thing down to this simple A plus B equals C concept 
which is not the case. <laughs> sales is an art. It's abstract. There's some science involved. And, and we're, we've literally created a cookie cutter mindset that's killing the profession. Love it. That totally makes sense. I think the, I think the funny, the funny thing about what you're saying here is the connecting part, connecting and humanizing everything actually is disrupting the pattern of everyone just seeking attention, right? So you're, you're kind of solving the problem by focusing on the connection. And I think you're spot on. Um, and I urge everyone watching and listening to this to, to try this, right? Take your, take, if you're an SDR, take your prospect today, the whole list, and instead of reading from your script, try this connection approach. Do some digging, figure out how you can connect. I, you, you know, I think the like act of just being sincere can show and you don't need to connect. Like, I'm sure like you have coworkers and employees and whatever, a team, and you're all different people. I've got like team from like 15 different countries. I don't, we, we don't agree on religion. We don't agree on work ethic. We don't agree on a lot of things, but find the common ground, uh, the way you would with your team. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to jump in with one last question here. I think you've, you've dropped some real value that I think really is, is so simple, but it's very hard to do. And it takes a lot of changing your behavior and mindset, but I want to, I want to end with, with, uh, what I mean, it's it's a it's a puncher here. What what's your what's your thoughts on AI? Like, just be real with it, right? I've got. I'm pretty sure we agree on this, but like, what do you think? Is this bullshit? Is it uh, is it actually helpful? Yeah, it's it's ruining even it's not just ruining the sales world; it's ruining people at this point. That like we're using it now. Listen, it's a fantastic tool for certain things, especially for internal processes at organizations or creating some structure. You know, a, a random question that you might have had for Google, you know, because you're a prude and you need to use Chat GPT for whatever. Like, it's a brand, right? It's a lifestyle. It's a concept as well, too. Like AI is is something that's cool. I'm not an old school guy and the and the 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 thought that like I th I think that technology sucks and that it's going to ruin the world although there's some real Sarah Connor vibes going on with this AI stuff for sure. At the same time though I do I believe that sellers use it as a shortcut, they use it as a cop out to do the actual work, they use it as a very insincere way to to try and gain some type of popularity or a shortcut to an ending when that doesn't exist. None of it exists is the problem. Them. You're we are liter we are lying to people. Every single day that we say things like, oh, you should use AI in your sales process. No, no, like yes, to a capacity it can help you. But the problem is is that everybody's just trying to like offload all the work and thinking to themselves, like, well, you know, my hundred dials a day aren't working, so let's do ten thousand dials a day, and this AI thing will will help me with that. And oh my god, it just, like don't get me started. It's just it's this idea of burning through opportunity that's all it is it's burning through yeah. opportunity it's burning it's plowing through something that just needs some intentional mindful work from the individual to be able to achieve more success and and the problem again too is is that we are so like think about this for a second like there's a whole generation that can like go and talk to ai and have like such an easy good you know down to earth conversation with it to the point that like they don't even need a human anymore so in the next like 10 to 15 years, like, what does that look like? It looks like people not even talking to each other anymore, bro. And, and there will be a whole generation that does that. But the secret sauce will always be that the person can make you feel so much differently than, than something like AI when they do things correctly. And there's nothing mm -hmm. that, that is a literal art. It is an inheritance that we as humans have and, and AI cannot replace it. It can artificially supplement it for sure without a doubt, but it cannot replace it fully. And, and so, you know, I, I have a strong opinion about this. And I think because of that, I think to myself, even like, I'm going to use it as little as I possibly can for my, from a cultural standpoint, you know, for sales inside of my organization, like we'll use it for process, other things for sure. But from a sales perspective, like now nah, we're going to do the research ourselves. We're going to get our hands dirty ourselves. We're going to show up at that person's office and do a tour if we have to, just to learn more about it instead of having something, you know, create a shortcut for us. And we have better outcomes because of it. I love it. I, I, and I, I, I generally agree. I think the, fu the funny thing is I imagine a world where AI 
that we're using for sales today, there's like an AI for people being sold. And so it's just like now AI just talking and like talking to each other. It's like, you know, um, and, and we're just removed from the situation, but you're right. Like plowing through a list is just never the right, the right move. So thanks so much for reiterating that. And I think really just sharing real, you know, your real thoughts and, and really hopefully opening up the folks watching, listening's eyes on a better way to do things. Um, where can people go to learn more and follow along and, and join the rebellion? The uh, best place to go is always salesrebellion.com, but also there's content feeds out there for anybody that wants to consume. LinkedIn.com backslash IN backslash copier warriors, my personal page. I post once, twice a day, whatever I'm feeling. Um, and then all the content feeds from TikTok all the way down. It's either at uh, Dale Rebel Leader um, or at Sales Rebellion if you want to follow the company pages as well. Uh, to find our free Slack channel. If you can't find it, come hit us up on one of our social channels so that we can give you the secret password to get in the rebel hideaway, as we call it. Uh, but regardless, whatever you do, join the rebellion. Get off your butt uh, around this concept of being mediocre or status quo and start choosing to be legendary. It'll change your life. Love it. Thanks so much.